What is going on guys? This is Trinkill and welcome back to part two of my Q&A series. Today we're going to continue on with the how to YouTube type videos and we're going to talk about software today. This one should probably be a little shorter than the first one because there's not as much to talk about. Now a lot of you guys had one big question last time. It seems unanimously you guys were wondering, hey I've got this headset. Can I use the mic that I would normally use to talk into Xbox Live or something like that? The the answer is yes, but I'm going to kind of give you an audio difference so you can hear kind of what it sounds like. You can record your voice into it. It sounds okay, but you can't be as animated as I like to be when I'm kind of talking. So when I'm talking right now, I'm talking decently loud. It's louder than how I normally talk, you know, in my day-to-day -day life. But when, you're, when your mic is that close to your mouth, you feel like you can't talk as loud because you start getting like the breath and stuff like that going into the microphone. And there's really no good way to get it far enough away from your mouth unless you've just got like one of those really long cord things that has the microphone on the end of it, whatever that thing's called. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to record my normal intro into my microphone on my headset so that you guys can kind of hear the difference in sound. And I'm going to do it exactly like I'm doing it right now so that you can hear the difference. So here is the normal intro to most of my videos on my headset. What's going on, guys? This is Trendkill, and welcome back to Blah Blah Blah. Alright, so here is the thing about that. Now, I don't know if you could hear the clipping and stuff that was happening, but it sounded very distorted. I had to take the volume down six decibels, or I would have blown your eardrums with that. It's really, really loud and obnoxious when I do it full volume. So, here is the next recording I took with that headset, talking a little quieter so that I didn't get the clipping and there was no distortion on my voice. What's going on guys? This is Trendkill and I'm talking a little quieter now because I'm experiencing some clipping when I talk as loud as I normally do. Alright, so that was the same microphone, the same distance from my mouth, and the same lowered decibel level. I lowered that one 6 decibels as well, just so you guys could have a fair comparison between the second recording and the first. Now you'll notice that that one sounded better as far as the audio quality is concerned, but I had to lower my excitement level a lot to be able to record that without like screaming into the microphone so that it didn't... You know, I don't, I don't want it to get that distortion or it sounds like crap, even if you lower the decibels. So, you can see the difference. Now, if you are a quieter commentator, like, say, a scene anners who's very usually not, not monotone, but he's always quiet and kind of uh, controlled. If you're that type of commentator, then these types of headset microphones may work for you. I, however, am more like akin to, say, a Sly Fox Hound or White Boy 7th Street or who else? I mean, uh, like a Tobuscus. They're all animated and loud and they kind of do different things with their voices at all times. And I need a microphone that is not going to distort when I talk loudly into it. So I can't use those types of mics. Now, one more thing I want you to notice about the first and second recordings through my headset mic is that there's a hiss. They get a lot of background noise. Those mics are not made to do anything else than sit a couple inches from your face off of a headset and talk over Xbox Live or PC or Ventrilo, something like that. So you got to put it into perspective. Those mics are made for one situation and one situation only. You're not going to be able to set your headset on your desk and talk at it, you know, 10 inches away from your face because those mics aren't made that way and you'll get a lot of room noise and, and background hiss and things like that. And it's just, it's not going to sound good. The hiss is going to overpower your actual voice. So again, if you can wear the headset, you can talk kind of like a quieter commentary, then that's probably okay. But people want to feel emotion when you're playing a game. How many times have I said, fucking balls, or something like that, you know? And I wouldn't have been able to do that in a headset without blowing your fucking ears off. So, you kind of got to know who you are and how you talk, and then that will let you know whether you can or cannot get away with using a headset mic. Alright, enough talking about microphones. That was for last episode. Let's move into the software. That's what we came here to talk about, right? So, the first piece of software that you're going to need that we're going to very, very briefly talk about is uh, video capture software. And if you're buying, uh, like, an HD PVR or a Dazzle or something like that, that hardware will come with its own software. Usually, that software is good enough. Again, you get what you pay for. The HD PVR software, I have never had a problem with. However, I've heard people buying Dazzles and the cheaper products are having some sort of issues with them, not capturing the video or having stuttering audio, things like that. So, 
I don't have a lot of experience with that. I cannot speak from personal experience, but I can say that my HD PVR software that came with it works perfectly. I've never had an issue. So moving beyond that, let's talk about actual video editing software. And a lot of you guys may be able to get away, at least initially, with something like Windows Movie Maker. That's completely free, you don't have to pay for, but it's very, very basic. I, on the other hand, do a lot of things that require something a little more, not professional, I guess, but a little more advanced. So I would at least minimum recommend like a product, something like, uh, oh, what's it called? Vegas Movie Studio HD, I think. I think that runs about 50, 60 bucks. And that's going to give you a lot more features than a Windows Movie Maker will. And it's going to give you a much higher quality program and software to work with. However, something basic like video, or I'm sorry, Vegas Movie Studio HD will only allow you 10 video tracks. So if you're going to have text and pictures and you want those in different areas on the screen and you're going to have video, obviously, or multiple videos on top of each other, like playing in picture in picture, you're not going to be able to get by with only 10 video tracks. I would venture a guess that... Let's say 60% of my videos have 10 or more video tracks, or let's say more than 10 video tracks. So I couldn't get away with it. Maybe some of the uh, the more basic editing stuff I can, like maybe our Borderlands Let's Play, that's one video track and you're recording, you edit it in and you sync the audio and you're done. That I would be able to get by with. But stuff like when I'm adding text and when I'm adding little, I don't know if you guys watched my, my Battlefield 3 videos, I had little icons up in the top left and I had to put those on separate video tracks to position them where I wanted to position them without having to move everything around. So again, if you can get by without 10 video tracks, you're probably okay. If you're going to be doing specifically live commentary type, uh, you know, gameplay, let's play type stuff, you're probably fine with an HD, with the HD software. However, there is a Vegas Movie Studio HD Platinum that will allow you to have unlimited video tracks and it adds things like color correction and stuff like that. Now, a lot of my videos all, well, not a lot of them, most of them, I'd say probably 90% of them have a color correction to kind of give the life back into the color. If you record from an Xbox, excuse me, if you record from an Xbox into a PVR, it kind of washes it out. Everything looks a little more dull than it should, and that really shows its true colors on videos like, uh, or I'm sorry, on video games like Black Ops. That was already kind of a bland colored type thing. Borderlands is another one. The washed out Borderlands looks like shit. It's very like, ugh, you know, it's just gross. When you put that color correction on it, one simple click, taking it from the recorded to like a computer type color, it's beautiful. It looks like you actually recorded it just straight off of the TV. So I like the color correction. I use it in almost every single one of my videos. And uh, that is definitely a reason to upgrade to the Platinum version of the Movie Studio HD. Now, I want to say the Platinum runs like more like 100, 120. I'll look the prices up and put those in the corner like I did last time. This is just like a preliminary audio voiceover type thing. So I'll get all the numbers nailed down and you'll have them up in the top corner there. Now, there are several competitors to Sony Vegas, and Adobe is actually one of them. That's the same company that makes Photoshop. They have a product called Adobe Premiere, which I actually started using way back in the day. Now, right now, I'm using uh, Sony Vegas 10 Pro, which is a $700 program, and I wouldn't recommend it for somebody just starting out. Now, the only reason I use that over anything else is because, again, I made video trainings for a previous company, and I used Vegas Pro as the software that I use, so I know it, I'm used to it, and I I already had it. Don't go spending 700 bucks on video editing software because you'll probably never even scratch the surface of what you'll need for Vegas Pro. But beyond that, Adobe Premiere is another company, or I'm sorry, another product by another company that is also a competitor. A lot of people have luck with Adobe Premiere. I just, I just don't like it as much. It's personal preference. It's a great product. It will do exactly the same things that of Sony Vegas will do. It's just a different feel from a different company. So that is another way you could go. I'm sure they have a cheaper version just like the Movie Studio HD for Premiere, uh, but I just don't know what it's called. I haven't done any research on it. I may, again, do try to do some research and have the info up in the top right-hand corner for you. Blah, blah, blah. Video editing software is obviously a necessity. I would stick with either Windows Movie Maker for the guys who want something free or go with the HD Movie, or the, I'm sorry, the Sony Vegas Movie Studio HD Platinum. Jesus Christ, that's a mouthful. Anyway, so let's move beyond the video editing software and get into the actual audio software. Now, 
you can do whatever you want. I'm sure there are products out there that are amazing for vocal audio recordings and stuff like that that you have to buy, you pay a hundred bucks for and stuff like that. I don't think it's necessary and I'm not even going to give you a good, better, best option on this. Use Audacity. It is a free program. It does amazing work. You can record your voice right into it, do all of your editing filters and, you know, re reducing the white noise and things like that. You can do all that in Audacity. Then you can export it as a wave or an MP3 and import it right into Vegas. Zero problem. So use Audacity. There's almost no better program, even paid program that I know of that would work just as good. So I'm not even going to give you, like I said, I'm not even going to give you another option there. Just download Audacity. It's going to do the job and you're going to love it. Last but not least, let's talk about photo editing software. And this is the one that I said was optional earlier. You are not required to do any kind of photo editing. However, if you're going to do this long term for longevity, if you become partnered with a company like Machinima, you start getting options of putting, you know, background banners on your channel and using video thumbnails and things like that. And unless you're going to want to pay somebody to make all your thumbnails and backgrounds and stuff like that for you, you may want to get into some Photoshopping type stuff and learning the software. Now, I was in a CS 1.6 clan and I did a lot of signature work and background stuff for our forums and websites and things like that. So I'm self-taught on Photoshop just because it's the best of the best as far as programs, at least photo editing programs are concerned. And uh, I just think that anybody who does any work on the internet should probably know how to use Photoshop. Now, again, it's not cheap. So if you want something that's cheaper, that's not necessarily as powerful as Photoshop, but does very good as far as photo editing is concerned, go with GIMP. It's a free program. It's an image manipulation program, and it works not as good as Photoshop, but for simple picture editing and things like that, GIMP will work just fine. You just lose some of the filters and some of the advanced techniques that Photoshop will do. So anyway, go with Photoshop if you can afford it. If not, use GIMP, just don't use like paint, like Microsoft Paint or something like that, unless you're going for something humorous or you want something to look silly and pixelated. But anyway, that's really all you're going to actually need. Anything else will be on a case-by-case -case basis, and I'm trying really hard right now to actually think back if I've ever used any extra software, and I can't remember anything off the top of my head. If I remember something, I'll definitely let you guys know, but other than that, let's recap. So you're going to need video capture software to grab the video coming from the capture card. You're going to need audio software to capture your voice through a microphone and then edit it down. You're going to need picture editing or photo editing software to make any stills or thumbnails that you may need, and you're going to need video editing software, most importantly, to put all of that together into one specific video. Other than that, I can't think of anything else that you would actually find useful. So that's about it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and start putting a video together to show you guys what settings to use inside your software. Because when you open up Photoshop, Vegas, Audacity, and your capture software for the first time, there are so many settings you've got to set, and that's really where a good quality commentator and a bad quality commentator can be separated because it's just so many settings and click this and do that and check this and uncheck that. It's just, it's crazy when you're first starting out to try to go, oh my God, what do I do? So I'm going to give you all of my settings and hopefully that will allow you guys to be able to jump right into it, having no problems and do it exactly the way I do it. So if you guys have any questions on this video or any of the software that I use, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and start putting video three together and we'll discuss anything that you have now in that video. So until next time, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me and we'll see you later. Thanks, guys. Bye.